an esteemed guest has returned to the airwaves this week. Of course, it is Chris Jericho. Chris, how are you, man? I'm good, man. I like the fact you called me esteemed. That makes me feel like a royalty, like I'm like the queen. <laughs> Very I'm regal. Steamed. Very mm. regal, yes. <laughs> Indeed it is. Uh, let's start with tonight, shall we? Yourself and Ortiz, going to go at it. Listen, you're one and one. Kevin Nash, his hair had to go. Uh, so No, no I'm 2-0, two, I'm two oh, man. 2-0. Oh. I beat Cavernicula Trace in 1993 in Arena, Mexico. And I uh, cut Kevin Nash's hair in 2003. So I'm undefeated in hair versus hair matches, man. So look out. This is like, you know, the Undertaker's casket match. Chris Jericho's hair versus hair. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, no, it's, 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 it's exciting because we've had a long story with, with Ortiz, obviously from the inner circle, then with the Jericho appreciation society. And I think this is kind of an intriguing way to continue the build the blood and guts, put the spotlight on a guy who deserves it. And uh, it's one of those perverse attractions. People like seeing other people get their hair cut for whatever reason. So um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a big show. And um, I'm two and oh, I don't plan on losing my third hair match, but uh, you never know what's going to happen. So when I come to London in a couple of weeks, I could have a Chrome dome. <laughs> so you never know. So enjoy the hair while you can. <laughs> well, speaking of which, that is the inside the ropes tour. Everyone's going to be lucky enough to hear stories of Chris Jericho do some Q and a, I believe was it Glasgow is at Belfast and London. Yes. In July. Yeah, July 4th is Glasgow, 5th is Belfast, and London is on the 6th. And the cool thing is I've done these tours probably three or four times uh, in the UK, and they always do uh, really well. People really respond to it. They love kind of the fly on the wall, um, you know, set up. The last time I was here, I did it on my own, uh, the same way that Bruce Dickinson just did his spoken word show. This time I'm going to do it with, with Kenny McIntosh the, hosting it. And we're going to do three separate topics, which we thought was cool because I have so much to talk about rather than jumble them around. There's a theme for each night. Glasgow is AEW. Belfast is, is WrestleMania. And London is my biggest matches. And then we'll have a Q&A after that as well. So um, it's kind of a really cool, uh, I guess, theme, like I said, for each mm. show. And we're excited to come back, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. I like that. I'm going to be at the London show. I can't wait to nice. hear about all of those big matches, man. Uh, and we all love Kenny. Who doesn't love Kenny McIntosh? Of course. Yeah, he's done a great job. He's done a great job with this. So, And that's the good thing too, man. Like you coming back to the UK, Fozzie do really well here. Obviously, yeah. you know, you've had you've had many times as well with the WWE over here. Hopefully, man. Do we think we're going to get you in AEW over here soon? Well, I know there was talks about coming over and maybe even doing Craven Cottage where, where Fulham plays. Uh, back, I think in 2020, back before the world went crazy. So now that we're back on board, I know that the two big cities that we're working on coming to is Toronto, number one, and London, obviously, number two. And I think the London show will be, you know, stadium level as it should be because yeah. right now, AEW is the most popular wrestling company in all the UK. Uh, if you look at the ratings that we have on ITV, they're through the roof. And um, I think it's going to be huge when we finally come. So hopefully we'll get some... Uh, some reports on that. In the meantime, like you said, I mean, our, our biggest tour ever with Fozzie was back in November. We sold out every show in the UK. Then we have this big tour coming up with, with Inside the Ropes in July. Then another big Fozzie tour in November, which is our biggest tour we've ever done. And that shows in London at the O2 Forum, I believe on November 14th. So <clears throat> we keep continuing to build on all aspects of Chris Jericho in the UK which is great because like I said, it's always been an amazing, amazing uh, country in England and all the other countries in the UK for, for me. So I'm always excited to come back. Very excited. Undoubtedly a hotbed is the UK for Chris Jericho. Um, mm. Hopefully, man, like I said, I can't wait for there to be a show. And I know it means a lot to you. You wanted to get a show into Canada and the UK. Yeah. I, I remember hearing you say that. So it would be awesome when you get the chance to do that. Yeah. And, and, and you know, not to sound almost sacrilegious, but I think London means more. Just because, I mean, Canada is always cool and I love Canada, but my connection to Toronto is as a city that I wrestle in. I mean, I'm from Winnipeg, which is from the other side of the country. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, you're going to your, going, coming home. It's like Toronto is not my home. You know, Winnipeg is my home. But London has been much more of a city. Like if you say, Chris, what are your favorite cities in the world? I mean, that aren't in the United States. Uh, I mean, Tokyo and London and Sydney, Australia are the top three that come into my mind right out of the gate. So 
always loved coming to London. I had such a great time when I was back there in November. I was there actually for about five days longer than I wanted to be, but it was still an amazing time. And I'm looking forward to coming back, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to go see the stones in Hyde park. Um, I got the big show at the grand. We've got a big press day for Fozzie in London. So there's a lot of stuff going on whenever I'm in town. Uh, and, and rightfully so, because like you mentioned, it's a hotbed for me. It absolutely is. Speaking of a lot going on, I do want to get some thoughts on the whole MJF AW situation that's transpiring right now. As, as a guy, obviously, you've worked with him very closely, had a you know great friendship slash rivalry that bled into that. What do you make of you know people making these reports that he wants to be paid at a certain level? Now, of course, his, he's been a featured player in AW, and they're saying that the complexities perhaps are that he doesn't want to extend, but he wants to be paid before he extends. Where would you sit on that? Would you think TK should be paying him or do you think that MJF should extend? Well, after 32 years of being in this business, I've learned something. If it doesn't have anything to do with me, I stay the hell out of it. Um, yeah. I don't really care. Uh, if I was in an angle with a, uh, MJF or something along those lines, or if I was the guy who was in charge of the contracts, then I'd be much more uh, interested in it, but I stay out of it. It's got nothing to do with me. Uh, the only thing I will say is a contract is a contract. And if every athlete and every sport wanted to be paid more now, then what's the point of having a contract? You know what I mean? So um, I guess we'll see what happens, how it plays out. I'm happy with my contract. And I know in a year and a half when my contract is done, we'll have some negotiations to discuss and that's how it goes. So until yeah. then I want to do the best performances that I can put on the best shows, have the best stories, uh, keep the, keep the people that, that are interested in AW happy and excited. And then when that contract is up, uh, I'll be rewarded for it. So um, MJF is 25. He's got a lot to learn. He's not as good as he thinks he is. And um, you know, like I said, it really has nothing to do with me, but I'm sure he'll probably be back because 18 months is a long time to stay at home. And that's Tony Khan's prerogative. You're under contract. You want to stay at home. You can stay at home and not get paid. And that's what happens. We, we see it happen in other com companies and that's just how it goes. And if you yeah. didn't you know, expect that, then why did you sign your contract in the first place? I guess the interesting thing as well, like just getting your viewpoint as a man that's worked both companies, I've read all your books. So I've read your thoughts about how you've been used down the years and things like that. Do you think um, MJF would be better off staying in AEW? Do you think he'd be watered down his character in WWE potentially? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He's better off staying in AEW. But once again, you know, you, you don't, don't stick your finger in the light socket. You know, you tell yeah. a little kid that and they're going to do it to see what happens. So I'm not going to tell anybody not to go elsewhere because I did it. I've done it for years. I did it to come to AEW. I walked away from, from WWE. Uh, when I signed my AEW contract, Vince McMahon said, can you get out of it? I'm like, no, you told me to go here. <laughs> You know, same thing happened when I left WCW to come to WWE. Sometimes you got to take a chance. And if you believe in yourself and feel that you're not getting your due, then you got to go elsewhere. So once again, if Max or anybody else, you know, Cody, if they want to go elsewhere, I mean, that's kind of just the way it goes. It's, that's pro sports. And that's what pro wrestling is, is pro sports. So it happens in the NFL. It happens in the NHL. It happens in the Premier League. Guys come and go, and that's just that's just the way it goes. So you got to have the best team possible with people that want to be there. And if you don't want to be there, it's just not going to be conducive to your overall performance, anyways. And much to people's, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if chagrin's the right word or may maybe surprise. Mm. Wrestling is a team. We are a team, and, and everybody on the team has to perform and want to be swimming in the right direction. And if not, then you got to make some changes. And it happens every single year in, in every company. There's never been a guy bigger than the company from Hulk Hogan to Bret Hart to Shawn Michaels to John Cena to Cody Rhodes. I mean, when guys leave the company, you know, who even remembers that Cody was in AEW? It was a pretty big deal when he left. But now it's like, well, we've all moved on and good for him and good for us. And let's get to the next chapter. Any night you have one of those great matches, Shawn Michaels and Jericho at WrestleMania, which was the best match on WrestleMania 19, whether it's four and a half, five, whether it's a 9.5 or a 10, to me, it was still the best match in the show. The, the fans felt that way. The critics felt that way. And most importantly, myself and Shawn felt that way. <laughs>